We greet you this morning on this, the 20th Sunday after Trinity. Let's rise and sing our opening hymn, hymn 294. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Everything that thou hast brought upon us, O Lord God, thou hast done in righteousness and judgment. For we have trespassed against thee and have not obeyed thy commandments. For we glory and honor to thy name, and be with us according to the multitude of thy tenderness. Those that are undefiled in the way, and walk in the law of the land. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it is from the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, of thy bountiful goodness keep us, we beseech thee, from all things that may hurt us, and that we, being ready both in body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish those things which thou commandest. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Here beginneth the fourth verse of the ninth chapter of the book Ecclesiastes. For to him that is joined to all the living there is a hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not any thing, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink the wine with a merry heart, for God now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life of thy vanity, which she hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. The portion of the Psalter appointed for this morning is Psalm 1, found on page 345 of the prayer book. Psalm 1. <coughs> Blessed is the man that hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, and hath not sat in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law will he exercise himself day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the waterside, that will bring forth his fruit in due season. His leaf also shall not wither, and look, whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. As for the ungodly, it is not so with them, but they are like the chaff which the wind scattereth away from the face of the earth. Therefore the ungodly shall not be able to stand in the judgment, neither the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, and the way of the ungodly shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians, beginning at the 15th verse. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, A friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good to see everybody today. Um, first and foremost, you know, today is the chili cook-off. And, and we, we had set up our Council of Pauls in order to judge this contest. Um, but unfortunately, one of our Council of Pauls um, fell by the wayside this week. Uh, Paul Owen had surgery this week uh, to get a, a, some cancer cells um, out of his shoulder. And so he's probably on some pretty good Dilaudid or something like that right now. Or, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, good stuff. <laughs> um, but so anyway, as, as is the apostolic tradition, we had an election. 
and which means I decided in my brain um, that, uh, that replacing Paul will be Jackson. The boy likes chili, and so he's going to be our third judge, just to make sure that it's fair. So, I already chose somebody else, but that's okay. No, I, I overrode her. So anyway, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, when somebody loves chili like this, this young man does right here, he has to be a judge. So, okay, so there we go. All right, so this week. All Saints Day is Tuesday, our patronal festival, and of course we'll have 12 noon Holy Communion, but we'll also celebrate that next Sunday because Bishop Chad will be here. Um, he always comes on All Saints, right at All Saints Day for us, uh, for confirmations and his visitation and everything like that. And uh, you may very well know we have like a bunch of All Saints all over the place, churches, and we're the one that gets him at the first of November, every single year. And I know why, because I take him to breweries. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it goes to show you what kind of bishop we got. Anyway, um, so, uh, but, so he will take next Sunday's Sunday school class, so I encourage you come if you've never met Bishop Chad, um, good time to meet him. And, uh, and also he's, he's always extremely, he's a, he's a great teacher and he's, and he's super entertaining. Um, and so uh, I know you'll enjoy that, so we'll see you then. All right, um, the annual stewardship campaign is going on, so please uh, make your responses as quickly as possible. You know, it costs us 60 cents now to send out. It's crazy how expensive it is. Who remembers a nickel? I do, yeah, absolutely, so, wow. Anyway, um, so uh, please turn your cards in as quickly as you can, and, uh, and of course our chili cook-off will be right afterwards, and uh, so we'll just go straight in there and have a good time with that. Um, and Cynthia wanted me to let you all know that the Tuesday morning book study has a book, and you'll be starting on Tuesday, November 8th. Um, I don't know any of the details, so she's here, go see her, okay? Say yes, Father. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, how about the blessing of her birthdays and anniversaries? Anyone had one in the past week? Coming up. Here comes Miss Batherson. Our birthday prayer is found on page 597 in the prayer book. If you'll turn to that, let us kneel and pray this prayer together. Let us pray. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be keeping her unspotted from the world. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. And raise her up if she falls. And in her heart may thy peace which passeth understanding abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> our sermon hymn today is hymn 389.
Today's gospel, it reads, everything is ready. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Everything is ready. But are we? What does it mean to be ready for the banquet, for the wedding feast? And what is this wedding garment without which it seems we're not ready? Without which we are out, even when we thought we were in? Without which it seems we shall be cast into outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The times are never so bad that a good man or woman or child cannot live in them. The quality of the times in which we live cannot be the measure of virtue and character. It's rather the setting in which virtue is shown and character is proven. The question for Christians at all times and in all places is whether they will be defined by circumstances or defined by grace. And by grace, of course, we mean the highest perfection of human virtue, which is God's work in us and for us, come what may in the world around us. Think of for a moment about St. Augustine. Back in the year 430, he was dying in his Episcopal city of Hippo. The armies of the Vandals were besieging the city. They were about to obliterate what had been his lifetime work in the formation of Christian souls. It was the first in a series of invasions that would virtually obliterate any trace of Christianity in North Africa. It would, however, survive, but principally in the writings of its theologians and clergy, chiefly of whom, of course, was St. Augustine. And then there's a fellow by the name of Dante. Dante was cast out of his beloved city of Florence, and he was cast into the dark wood of exile, to use his term. And yet, in spite of his exile, he produced probably the greatest epic poem of the Christian pilgrimage, the Divine Comedy. As he writes, to lead those in a state of misery to the state of felicity. But the point may well be summed up best in Shakespeare's play, As You Like It, where the Duke, who's been exiled to the forests of Arden, and not this Arden that's over this way, and he says poignantly, if not a bit, shall we say, over-romantically, he says this, sweet are the uses of adversity, which, like the toad ugly and venomous, wears yet a precious jewel in his head. And this our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. How hard and yet how necessary to know the good in everything, and even that sweet are the uses of diversity, or adversity, I should say. And yet it was in the dark wood, Dante tells us, the dark wood of the world's adversity and the soul's perplexity that he learned a great good. The alarms and the adversities of our day certainly rightly command our attention, as well they should. The great biblical scholar Jerome, Pope, the one that produced the Vulgate, the Latin translation of the Bible that was so formative for Christianity right up into our Book of Common Prayer. 
He was thinking about the sack of Rome that was occurring in 410 A.D. The Ostrogoths came. And Jerome writes that the mind shudders at the thought of the ruin of our age. The mind shudders. Not just shattered. Rather, it is shaken into thought upon the greater mystery and wonder of God's providence at work in and through the foolishness of our humanity. However distraught it may be, however in disarray it may be. To be defined by the circumstances of our day is to choose Fortuna, the ancient goddess of blind chance. We tend to use the term Lady Luck. She goes merrily on her way, favoring first one and then another, and leaving so many more in ruin in her wake. See, the reality is she doesn't care. She goes merrily on her way. The wheel turns and we are either lifted up or crushed below. If we choose to follow the revolving wheel of fortune and happenstance, as we say, going with the flow, then we will be broken upon the wheel of her indifference. Broken as much, of course, inwardly as outwardly. And yet, perhaps, that may be when the awakening of the mind happens to the providence of Almighty God. You see, for God does care. And ultimately, even the adversities in our affairs belong to the lessons of his care, lessons of his love tough lessons though they may be. They may be learned from the pageant of history, from the poets, or from the parade of our own experiences. But surely, they are best learned through the light of his word, which illuminates a way of understanding. Now I've mentioned some pretty famous people so far. Augustine, Jerome, Dante, Shakespeare, Pretty good company right there. But there are a host of others down through the ages who also bear testimony to the providence of Almighty God and the readying of the soul for the things of God in the face of crisis and adversity. One of my fellow favorites is William Nicholson. William was born in the late 16th century during Queen Elizabeth I's reign. He was deprived of his living as an Anglican priest when the English Civil War period hit in the mid-17th century after Charles I was martyred. And what he did is he taught school to get by. The prayer book, too, was banned because the Puritans didn't particularly care for any kind of formal prayer. But when the kingdom was restored in 1660, William took up a new task. In fact, he was first made Bishop of Gloucester because he had remained faithful during the time. But he also undertook to write a book called An Exposition of the Catechism. Catechism is that little section in the back of our prayer book. He recognized that after such a ruinous time, what was needed was precisely a return to the foundational principles of our lives in the faith. And what could be more foundational than the catechism, which seeks to create a resonance in us of God's Word and Son? I mean, our catechism is almost unique for its liturgical character, its brevity, and also its strong insistence on the doctrinal basics of the faith and our identity in the faith. And so we can say that it's really, it's an illustration of the providence of Almighty God for us, readying our souls for the things of God in good times and bad. In Jesus Christ, the providence of Almighty God is written out for us to read most clearly and most dramatically. 
He is, we might say, the mind of God's providence, the Word and Son of the Father who came unto his own and his own received him not. The parable in today's gospel is actually a parable of the gospel itself. Jesus shows us a picture of our indifference to his love, our indifference to his good for us, but only so as to shake us into readiness and preparation, if you will. So turning back to the beginning, what then is the wedding garment? It's nothing less than the charity, the love of God in the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. The wedding garment is Christ Jesus. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, as St. Paul says. Our preparation is our full yearning for his love. It, include, it includes and indeed it demands our full-hearted repentance. What is this marriage feast in the parable? It is nothing less but the marriage of heaven and earth, the union of God and man in Christ Jesus. It signifies his entire incarnate life, the preparations for his comings and our refusings, his coming and our callous disregard. But the parable is told to make us ready both in body and soul, to shake us, to make us shudder into thought and action. Everything is ready. And he would have us ready too, ready and, to pre and prepared to enter into everything which he in his providence has prepared for us. Everything is ready. And God would make us ready too. He is, after all, the good in everything. Amen. Now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, do we ascribe as is most justly due great honor, glory, and majesty, both now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven.
Let us pray. Dearly beloved, we offer the Eucharist this day in union with Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who continues to make intercession on our behalf in the heavens. Would your prayers this day for all those who are sick and suffering, remembering especially those of this place, for David, Francis, Jeanette, Norm, Paul, and Randy. We also pray for our family, friends, and others who need and desire our prayers, especially those we remember now in our own hearts. We pray for those who are traveling, remembering David this week. And also, finally, I bid your prayers this day for peace in Ukraine. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours also may be acceptable in the sight of God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, especially Joseph, our president, Roy, our governor, and all those in authority with them, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in the love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and our love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 
and he is the propitiation for our sins. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and that institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O most merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, and these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy Father the goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, 
humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy son Jesus Christ be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him and although we're unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to, come to this to thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful.
our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith. And now, having received the most precious body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, let us pray together in great thanksgiving. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries. 
with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Depart in peace. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.